of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How incomprehensible are his judgments. How unsearchable his ways. And my dear friends, as I tell you all the time, this is one of the reasons why we need to praise and honor and glorify God continually because of his great goodness, his great power, and his infinite mercy and goodness. You cannot even begin to understand, as St. Paul tells us, the depth and the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, infinite in all manner. He knows all things. He created all things out of nothing. He is three in one, three persons in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We cannot even begin to understand that. We know the famous story of St. Augustine. When he went down to the beach one day, he was contemplating the Blessed Trinity, the great St. Augustine. And he was walking back and forth, trying to fathom out this great mystery. And a little boy was there with a shovel and a pail, and he was walking to the water, taking the pail of water and putting it in the, in the little hole, back and forth, all, all the time that Augustine was walking up and down. And then Augustine got distracted and says, little boy, what are you doing? I'm trying to empty the ocean into this little hole. <laughs> Augustine laughed, my boy, my friend, my son, you can't do that, look how big the ocean is. You can't put that ocean into this little hole. And the little boy who was an angel in disguise said, neither can you put the Blessed Trinity in your small mind because the Blessed Trinity is infinite. We can't even begin to understand. And if we're in, we go to heaven for all eternity, we will be contemplating God for all eternity and never exhausted. That's why the St. Paul would tell us, neither eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered the mind of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Heaven. Say, Padre Pio would say, always think of heaven. Heaven, heaven, heaven. We were made for heaven. And now I'm coming to my catechesis on Mary, as you know, if you've been here for the last few Sundays, during this month of May, I've been doing a, a little catechesis on Our Lady, especially Our Lady of Fatima, which I think, of course, is the most wonderful apparition of Our Lady. Just absolutely magnificent. And it was by the will of God, of course, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, because Our Lady is God's greatest work in the bull for the Immaculate Conception in Ephabolus Deus, Pope Pius IX says, God has lavished upon her more grace than all the other angels and saints put together, put together, combine all the graces and goodness and virtues of the angels and saints, and they could, they cannot equal man, Our Lady. And in order to understand Our Lady, we can't, again, because it's the work of God. Only God knows how much Our Lady is, how holy it is, because she made her. And she was sent by God in 1917 in, to our world, which was floundering. Pope, Pius, the, Pope Benedict XV had asked our, God, our, late, our Lady to help in the end of the war the war to end all wars, the First World War. And Our Lady sent the angels in 1916, the th angel of Portugal to teach the little children prayers. And then in May of 1917, May 13th, she came. And she came and in every apparition thereafter, May, June, July, August, September, October, she asked to pray the rosary Pray the rosary, she said, because the rosary is so, so important. And we know this from the saints. Various saints have told us about the rosary, how important the rosary is.
And we see what St. Francis de Sales says. The greatest method of praying is to pray the rosary. The greatest method of praying is to pray the rosary. St. Francis de Sales. As you know, St. Francis de Sales was a great bishop, an incredible doctor of the church. And St. Louis de Montfort said, when the rosary is said well, it gives Jesus and Mary more glory and is more meritorious than any other prayer. Notice he says, say it well. Say it as best you can, of course. Not easy, because it can be a little repetitious, but it doesn't have to be. So the rosary is so important. And equally part of that Our Lady's apparition, she said that she would come after these apparitions and ask for certain things to happen. One of those was the five first Saturdays. She wanted everybody to do the five saints first Saturdays out of reparation for the sins against her immaculate heart. This is very dear to the Lord. As you know, Jesus wants us to honor his mother. So when we dishonor his mother, the Lord is not too pleased because this is his very special mother, of course. Anybody who insults your mother, my mother, we're very offended. The same way with Jesus. And he wants us to make reparation for the sins of the world against Our Lady. The various sins that we see with various people in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Sins against her sacred images, right? sins against her Immaculate Heart, blasphemies against the Immaculate Conception, blasphemies against her virginity, laughing at her virginity, ha, 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 Okay, how can a virgin conceive and bear a son? Well, it's a miracle. It's God work. So we never want to mock Our Lady's virginity. That's the special prerogative of her because she's going to be the mother of God. Blasphemies against her divine maternity, the mother of God, refusing at the same time to acknowledge her as the mother of all men. She's not only God's mother, but our mother. Because Jesus said on the, on the cross, Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. And so many people, so many Protestant religions and other religions don't give Our Lady the honor that she should have. This is very, very displeasing. And we wonder if they can gain salvation if they dishonor God's mother. It's very important. Blasphemies of those who seek publicly to put in the hearts of children indifference or to ignore or even to hate the Immaculate Mother. Five, offenses of those who directly cause outrage to vire her holy images. We know various persecutors of the church have destroyed some of her images, all right? Mocking them and, and breaking them apart and so on and so forth. So in order to make up for these reparation, Our Lady had asked for the five first Saturdays. Now this, my dear friends, is an absolute great promise. You cannot get any better than this. When I was a young youngster in, in school, in grade school, I was about 12 or 13 years of age, I remember the sister, the good Dominican sister, telling the class about the five first Saturdays. And I remember saying to my friend, Jimmy, Jimmy, I think let's, let's go tomorrow to the five first Saturdays. Let's start them. And it was the most wonderful thing in the world. Our Lady said to do the five first Saturdays. Why? Because of the promises, not just because, of course, the, the reparation for the images of Our Lady and the name of Our Lady, but the five first Saturdays have special promises to attach to them. That Our Lady, she said in 1925 to Sister Lucia, I promise to assist at the hour of death 
with all the graces necessary for salvation, all those who on the first Saturday of five consecutive months go to confession, receive Holy Communion, recite five decades of the Rosary, and keep me company for a quarter of an hour while meditating on the mysteries of the Rosary with the intention of making reparation for me. We should make sure we say that, right? You can even, when you go to confession, you can even go and tell the priest, um, this is my confession for the first Saturdays to make reparation for the sins of the world against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So it's very, very important. I like to tell the story of W.C. Field, all right? You never, probably never heard of him. Only old timers like me, I remember seeing the black and white movies with W.C. Field, he was a comedian, very funny man. And he had a, a, little, a, little, a little liking of the drink. He liked to have a few drinks once in a while. Jack Daniels, to be exact. So W.C. Fields had a Jack Daniels in his hand, a glass of Jack Daniels, and in the other hand, a Bible. So one of his men said, W.C., what are you doing? I'm looking for a loophole, he said. He was in the Bible and he was looking for a loophole to get to heaven. I don't know if he found it, but this is the loophole. Our Lady is the loophole. You have devotion to Our Lady and you will, and the first Saturdays, and you will get to heaven because she promised us that. She promised that if you do the first Saturdays, that she will be there at the end of your life when you're dying on your deathbed with all the graces necessary for you to save your soul. My dear friends, that's, that's a big promise. I hope you understand that. All right, Our Lady will be there and you will get all the graces you need to enter heaven, to save your soul. Of course, as you know, we're all gonna be der terribly uh, afraid of dying, of course. The devils will be around us, surrounding us. We'll think of all our sins. It's gonna be pretty torturous. So it's nice to know that Our Lady will be there as a reward for our doing the first Saturdays. So, so important that you do those first Saturdays. She promises to be there with all the graces necessary for you to save your soul. And if you do the first Saturdays, you get those graces. Now, what, is, what does the first Saturdays include? Well, the first thing you do is the communion of reparation. Make up to make repair, make up for the sins against the Immaculate Heart, the blasphemies against Our Lady, when people don't love Our Lady, when they say nasty things about her and so on, as I've already mentioned. So that's the first thing. So you make up for those things by going to Holy Communion. Then you go to confession eight days before or eight days after the first Saturdays. So if you've gone to confession yesterday and, or today or during this week, that's eight days before, within the eight days, and then eight days afterwards. Because next Saturday is the first Saturday, the first Saturday of June. And if you haven't done the first Saturdays, the five first Saturdays, make sure you start now because time is a wasted. How much more time do we have? What better time than when this world is in such terrible, this desperation, such a great crisis. I'm sure you realize we're in one of the greatest crises the world has ever seen. So we gotta do something now, we've got to change. We've got to do more. And Our Lady did say that when men do what I say, which means stop offending God, all right, he's too much offended by sin, pray the rosary and do the five first Saturdays the Holy Father, the Pope, will get the graces to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Russia, symbol of communism, as it were, 1917, just a few days after the final apparition of Fatima, Russia is the spreading her errors now more than ever, more than ever. People thought the, the Russian bear was dead, he was not. He was just sleeping a little while. 
making us believe that he's just taking it easy. He's all, everything's okay, he's changed, and he's a nice guy now. No, communism, communism is right from hell, all right? And as you've been reading the newspapers about America, America is on the verge of being coming communist. It's hard to believe. So that's the other thing we want to make sure we do, is to make reparation and go to Holy Communion, and of course the f confession, eight days before. So few people go to confession. This would be like a monthly confession. So timely, so important to keep you in, in your, and your soul in good spiritual shape, right? You should go to confession at least every two weeks, but Our Lady asked for once a month. The reason for every two weeks is so that you can gain the indulgences, because in all the various prayers, you have to go to confession eight days before the prayer or eight days after, even if it's in the middle of the month, right? Right, that's only good for two, 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 two weeks, as it were. I hope you understand that. Because if you're going to receive a plenary indulgence, you have to go to communion on that day, or the day you do the work, or soon thereafter, and you have to go to confession eight days before or eight days after. And then, finally, well, to say the five decades of the rosary on the first Saturday, Five decades of the rosary, joyful, sorrowful, glorious, luminous, all right, five decades. The beautiful mysteries of the rosary that are so important, the mysteries of our faith. And remember, the rosary is never boring. You can, the more you pray the rosary and the more you meditate on the mysteries, because it's about the, the life of Jesus and Mary. Just take, for example, the Annunciation. This is a great mystery, my friends something we'll be celebrating for throughout eternity because it is the mystery that we see the word of God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became man through the power of the Holy Spirit and with the obedience of Our Lady. So you could say the first joyful mystery, the Annunciation, you could pray, the, pray before it, the the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. Or if you wish, in the middle of the hail, of the hail Mary, thy womb, Jesus, you could say, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit through the obedience of the Blessed Mother who said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. You can shorten that, of course, but that's basically the thing you could say. Thy womb, Jesus, who was conceived by the Virgin, by the Holy Spirit. Thy womb, Jesus, the Word was made flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. You say that throughout the mystery of the Annunciation, and you will be remembering, and you won't be as distracted as you normally would have been. And then the Hail Marys will get so beautiful, and they are so beautiful. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, who is the Son of God. Right? Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We've asked for Mary's prayers now during all our troubles and especially at the hour of our death. Right? That prayer, of course, the Hail Mary is in the scriptures, except for the end of it, the Holy Mary, that was composed by the church, all right? So, the final thing that you have to do is to keep Our Lady company by meditating on the mysteries of the rosary, to keep her company. And you meditate, you think about the various mysteries, just like I just said before with the, with the Annunciation. You can think about the crucifixion, Jesus suffering and dying on the cross and using the, this, any scriptural te text. Greater love than this no man has than he lay down his life for his friends. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And say that throughout the Hail Mary for, the, for, the, for that decade. Or else you can say, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all things to myself. You could say that. 
Jesus who will draw all things to himself by being crucified. Jesus who suffered and died and was crucified for me. Any little word or phrase, scriptural or, or by from the church or catechism that you say during the rosary will help you to meditate on the rosary and help you to not to get distracted and get more out of the rosary. Because don't forget, these are mysteries. These mysteries of the rosary are, in a way, infinite because it's the life of God. Who can even imagine what it is that God, a God, would become man, as we see in the, in the, in the Annunciation or in the Resurrection, right? You seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen as he said. And you could say that during the rosary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, who was risen from the dead, as he said. You seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen from the dead. My dear friends, when you go over the mysteries of the rosary using the various narratives of the rosary, the various stories and so on, they become very, very important. And you can get more and more out of them. And the rosary is never boring. Never, never boring. How could it be boring? It's all about God and what he's done for you and for me and Our Lady in the glorious, sorrowful, luminous mysteries, joyful. Now, one final point, I just want to, just a little, a little couple of facts about the great apparition of October 13th, all right? Lucia, remember, this is a 10-year-old girl. She said that Our Lady would do a great miracle on October 13th. Of course, everybody laughed at her. Nobody believed her. Who's this little kid? Where, where'd she ever get these crazy stories about a, a, a woman coming to her? And what she said, she's gonna perform a great miracle. Ha, ha, ha. So a lot of people came to see what was gonna happen. Many of them, I'm sure, came to laugh. Many of the Freemasons came up from Lisbon, believe it or not, to laugh at this whole thing because it was taken over by storm the various other months. Each month, people were getting greater and greater crowds. So on the final October 13th day, when Our Lady promised, by the way, never in the history of man, as far as I know, had a miracle ever been prophesied that God will perform a miracle on such and such a day at such and such a time. Never. I could be wrong, but I don't think it is. That's what I read someplace, and I couldn't think of any that God at a certain time, and here's a little girl, 10 years old, little Lucia, saying that the Blessed Mother is gonna perform a miracle on October 13th at 12 noon. All right, and guess what happened? Four days before the apparition, the rains came. It rained and rained and rained for four straight days. It was a deluge. The COVID era where the apparition was going to place, the people were up a foot into water. They were walking in water. Their clothes were soaking wet, right? Four days. And still there were 75,000 people there that day. All right, and at 12 noon, Our Lady appears and the sun spins in the heavens and the people all thought it was the end of the world. It looked like the sun was coming right down on the earth, and they were frightened to death. Now, that's an apocalyptical miracle, in a way. One, one writer talked about how these two natural occurrences rep represent two of the chastisements that God had done to the world already. One the deluge, when they destroyed the world by water with 40 days and 40 nights with no one alone saved. So that was reminiscent of the deluge. And the fire falling from heaven is reminiscent of God sending fire and brimstone on 
Sodom and Gomorrah, because of their unnatural sins of homosexuality. Those two cities and all the other cities around involved, involved in that sin were destroyed completely. And that's, the, that's where Lot's wife turned around and was turned into a pillar of salt, salt. Because you never, never look upon the punishment that God gives to people. Never. God's punishment are reserved for him. And he told them not to look upon Sodom and Gomorrah burning. Lot's wife did, and she turned into a pillar of salt. So just a little thing to remember, that they were, in a way, all right, like a, like a foreshadowing of what could happen even in our world. Great chastisements, as Our Lady said. Whole nations could be annihilated. She said, if men don't stop offending God, Russia will spread her errors. And Russia spread her errors all around the world, as we see. And if men don't stop offending God, there'll be another world war during the reign of Pope Pius XI. And there was, right? We had the World War II. And she said also that whole nations will be annihilated. Some people conjecture that this could even be what's going to happen with this pandemic. Many people will die and whole nations could be annihilated. I don't know about that. I don't know what it is. Most people do think that whole nations will be annihilated could be from a war, or it could be what Our Lady said at Akita, fire will fall from heaven and two thirds of the world will be destroyed if men don't stop offending God. So my dear friends, I hope that you see how important this Fatima message is. And the most important thing for us today, after I've, I've already said about Fatima in the last several weeks, but how important it is to do the five first Saturdays. It is an absolute must. If you do not listen to this request of Our Lady, my dear friends, your whole salvation is in jeopardy, really, because this is important. I'm not saying you can't save yourself doing other things, but this is very important. And it's like an insurance policy, all right, to do it, all right? Most wonderful thing in the world. And by the way, you do five, don't stop after five. Oh, thank God I finished, I did five. I've been doing them since 1950 when I heard. The only time I didn't do, I didn't do it right because I didn't know what the word meditation meant. I was just a 12 year old kid. I didn't know what meditation meant. It didn't, didn't occur to me to ask somebody, what is meditation, right? It's not so hard. It's thinking about the mysteries in your mind, meditating, contemplating, all right? Thinking about the mysteries and keeping Our Lady company. So we see this is so, so important to save our souls. And if men do what I say, Our Lady said, one of the other aspects of this whole Fatima message is, and how about this? This could be the icing on the cake. An absolute wonderful message. It, Our Lady said, if men do what I say, stop offending God, pray the rosary, and do the five first Saturdays, she will say she will conquer Russia, all right? The Holy Father will get with the other bishops, will consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and Russia will be converted. Communism will end, it will be converted. We haven't seen that yet because we haven't done what Our Lady asked, all right? When did you ever hear about the Fatima message? When did you ever hear about praying the rosary? When did you ever hear about the five first Saturdays? You don't. I mean, I don't. I don't remember hearing too much in all my years going to church. That's why I took time this month to talk about it. And that's one of the reasons why I mentioned at every sermon the Fatima message. Quickly, I do, but I, I mention it. Our Lady said many souls will go to hell, right? Because no one prays and sacrifices for them. I know this is a little long, this sermon, but uh, I hope nobody has a plane to catch, but I did want to get this in so that you can, you know, remember it and do it, because it's so absolutely important. 
it is an absolute must. Just like praying the rosary is an absolute must. Our Lady did also say, if you pray the rosary, you'll it's a sign of your predestination for heaven. You'll go to heaven if you pray the rosary. My dear friends, those are important things. We all want to be saved. We all want to go to heaven. Well, we just got to do something. We can't be going out in the world, eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow we die. I'm going to the pub tonight. I'm going to get drunk again, like I got drunk last week and the week before that and the week before that. I'm going to have a good old time with my mates. That's nice. And where are you all going when the world ends, as it were? You and your mates, where are you going? You're going to be on the broad way, the broad way that leads to hell. If you don't stop your sinning, getting drunk, taking drugs, and everything else, stealing, whatever people do. And of course, as Our Lady said at Fatima, most souls go to hell, she told Jacinta, because of the sins of the flesh, sexual sins. And she said many marriages are not good because there are sins in marriage. People divorce and remarry. People contracept and don't accept the children that God wants to give them. People abort their children. My dear friends, our world is a disaster and many souls will not be saved. That's why the message of Fatima and Our Lady's message in 1917 is so, so important. So I've already said a lot, so I hope you, hope you got the message. Pray the rosary, do the five first Saturdays, stop offending God, and pray for all your loved ones, because many souls will go to hell because no one prays and sacrifices for them, and especially the rosary. May the Lord bless you.